Honestly, I didn't plan on making this video. I'm over this whole ordeal, and I just want to get back to managing my bees. But since Flowhive decided to mention me and claim my statements were false, I feel like I need to address this. Because what we're not going to do is play this game of gaslighting or twisting words. So a quick recap. It's been over two weeks since the Flowhive team gave me some concerning advice that could have put my bees at serious risk. After my bees rejected their plastic frames, their suggestion was to remove one of my full deep boxes to encourage the bees to move up into the super. Once they started filling the flow frames, I was supposed to put the second box back on the hive. I replied to them expressing my concerns. Removing a deep box in the middle of the summer would overcrowd my colony and stress out my bees. I also asked for clarification. Where was I supposed to put this box full of honey, pollen, bees, and baby bees while I waited for my hive to go up into the plastic honey frames? Which could take weeks or more, according to their rep. Two weeks later, and I still haven't heard back. However, I was made aware that they were replying to comments about my situation on their own page, and now they're saying my claims that they suggested I should remove the deep box and then put it back on later once the bees were up in the flow frames is incorrect. They're saying that they never suggested I remove my full deep and that it was all a misunderstanding on my part. But that's not true. Your rep did suggest I remove a box after I told her that both of my lower boxes were 90% full. And instead of clarifying things with me directly, you responded further clarifications to other people on your page, not to me in our private messages. You clarified to these people, not to me, that I should take away the second box and its honey frames, condense all the brood into one box, and put the empty super back on top. Again, you never said this to me. But here's the thing, this suggestion is just as concerning as their first. I would expect the Flowhive team to know that a colony at its peak in midsummer can have up to 80,000 bees. Compressing all these bees into one box would definitely stress them and very likely cause them to initiate a swarm. As I mentioned in my response to the Flowhive's rep's initial message, both boxes were 90% full of honey, pollen, and baby bees. Condensing all the brood into one box means that I'm having to remove nearly all the pollen, honey, and nectar from the hive to make room for the brood. So where am I putting all the honey frames? Remember, some of it is still nectar that's full of water and needs to be dehydrated into honey. And what about the frames of pollen? In this case, bee bread, left unattended and it'll spoil and mold. All this nectar, honey, and bee bread are also essential for feeding the house bees and raising baby bees. This is their main food source, so by removing it, the hive would be in serious danger of starvation. Now to be clear, I never asked for the flow hive's advice in the first place. They reached out to me. I already knew how to troubleshoot my hive. But their continued suggestions on their own page only reinforce my concerns about the limits to their expertise in beekeeping. And I'm genuinely concerned about what kind of advice they might be giving to new beekeepers, who may not have the experience to recognize how concerning and potentially harmful these suggestions could be. Now, through all this back and forth commenting both privately and on their page, and from advice I've seen them give to their customers, I've started to realize another potential issue with Flowhive. And I think it lies within the fact that some methods of beekeeping will be very different based on your location. Successfully managing bees is heavily influenced by your environment and its climate. And practices that work well in one region of the world may not apply in another. Cedar, the founder of Flowhive, even admitted in a recent live that he's not an expert in international beekeeping, as his experience comes from the subtropical region of Australia. So I think part of the problem might be that these hives are being promoted and sold worldwide, including in climates that are not subtropical. And some of the advice from their reps seems to reflect methods that may work better in their local climate. So a possible solution. I think it would be beneficial for his team that troubleshoots or gives advice on social media to be better trained in beekeeping methods in other climates, if they plan to continue promoting and selling their product worldwide. So again, with my situation, I knew what to do. I added wax to the frames and my bees moved right up. But unlike my other hives, I've been attempting to work with this flow hive through the lens of a new beekeeper. Cause it seems to me that a lot of flow hives marketing is directed towards people that want to get into beekeeping. And looking back to when I started 12 years ago, I would have taken their advice simply cause it is their hive design. And that's the root of my concern. Because as most of you know, and I've said this before, but I'll keep saying it, my top priority will always be the happiness and safety of my bees, not the convenience in harvesting the extra honey they produce.